All right, this is going to be part two of the WR250R motard with the VTR250 wheels. Um, I've had the bike on the road now for about a week. I'm just ridden it to and from the shops and to work and back. COVID-19 restrictions, we can't really ride recreationally, so I can't go out and have any fun on it. But um, so far, it's feeling pretty good. Um, I did part one was how to set up the axle, the 70 millimeter Yamaha axle inside the VTR or CBR250 wheel. Um, CBR or VTR250 run a 15 or a 20 mil axle, and this is a 17 mil axle. So if you wanna know how to set that up, um, part one's where to go for that. This we're just going to talk about spaces and whatnot, assuming that you've already got your bearing set up to run on a um, 70 mil axle. Um, centering the wheel um, with the Honda wheels, I, there's a cast mark in them that you can find um, that that ends up being the centre of the rim, um, and then there's a casting mark on the fork tube, on the fork lowers. Um, that ends up being the center of the fork tube. So it makes it pretty easy prospect then to measure from this side to the center of the rim and then from the center rim to that side and you can confirm that you've got the right measurement which I think on this bike, I think it's about 95 but we also did the TDR so don't quote me on that. Um, the critical spacer in this is the one on the disc side that will set the wheel into the center because the axle will bolt the wheel against that spacer into this fork leg. This fork leg, um, this space is not so critical because that um, shoulder on the axle pushes the spacer in um, and then that from that shoulder out to the outside of the axle is um, can slide in on, this, on this fork lower. The idea is that you put the axle in, do it up tight, leave these loose, bounce the front suspension, that will let this settle in the right place so the fork is straight, um, so the fork tubes don't bind up. Then you nip these up um, to tie it, and that keeps the front fork straight. So this is not that critical. You could have that poke out of here a couple of millimeters, and it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, it just looks nicer if it's flush. Um, so that's how that's set up. Um, so build the, build the inside spacer um, on the disc side. Check it to make sure it is center. If it's not, adjust it or cut a new one um, until that's right. And once that's right, then just cut that one, and don't be too picky. Um, the front disc is a um, Metal Gear uh, 21258A um, um, disc. Um, it comes on a, as a particular Honda model, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it is only available off a couple of years. They're a little bit rare, but it's a 6mm disc, so it's probably never going to wear out on this bike. Um, the offset on it means that the center of this disc is 12 millimeters offset from the center of the standard disc which means I've been able to use a 12 millimeter block of aluminium um, this hole is drilled and tapped for a helicoil and the helicoil for an M8 thread is into here so this M8 bolt can bolt straight into that thread without any nuts on the back um, and then this bolt goes can bolt directly into the um, caliper itself exactly as this does when the caliper is in its standard position um, this bracket offsets the caliper not just back but back and up um, that means that the brake line doesn't need to be extended longer um, and it means that to convert back to dirt I just take this bracket out and this caliper can bolt back into its original place um, the hose is run on the outside because if it doesn't on the motard setup unless you use the WR250X um, fork protectors which brings this bracket down to here um, then the brake hose would rub on the tire. So instead of changing this out, I want to keep this because I still use it in the dirt. Um, I've just run the hose on the outside. When I go and change the wheels back to the dirt wheels, the caliper gets unbolted. It'll just get put inside with the hose running where it runs standard on the WR250R, and then the caliper will get mounted back to the standard um, brake position. Um, so that's the, uh, and the, the building the caliper bracket, I started out with a template um, out of cardboard first, just really stiff cardboard, and then I used that to mark the holes up, and then I set this in, um, built this out of timber. This is 6mm timber. Then I used 6mm of washers to bolt it all together to make sure it was all going to fit. Um, and once I was certain that it was all going to fit, then I ordered the 12mm aluminium block, and then just drilled these out with a bench drill to make sure they're all square, um, threaded and tapped um, where appropriate, 
and put it together. Um, the disc pad, the brake pads in this caliper did need to be shaved flat down um, about half a millimeter each, otherwise they wouldn't fit over the six millimeter disc. Um, that means the pads have a little bit left, less life in them, I guess, um, but you've got a six millimeter disc, so um, that's gonna last forever. Um, these rivets, because this disc is mounted backwards, these rivets are thicker on the backside, um, and so that has an opportunity to make contact with the inside of the caliper bracket if um, if you're not careful. And I don't know if that's going to focus. Um, so where that you see where that runs around, it's you know it's quite close. There's not a lot of tolerance there. So you just have to be really careful when you set um, your um, disc location on that bracket. What I did was I put a series of zip ties stacked on the back of the disc when I put the caliper on, which spaced the caliper back away from the disc the same amount. Moved it around until it suited, marked the holes, went away and cut it out of timber, came back, test fit it, did a full inspection. was happy with that, and that's how I did it. If you're trying to do this, and you can't get your head around doing those sort of things, then it's probably outside of the scope of your technical ability. But if you have a bench drill, um, and a bench grinder, and a bench sander, then you've probably got enough tools to do this job at home. So that's uh, part two done. Um, I'll do part three in a minute, which will cover off on the rear wheel. Oh, actually, before I do, I want to show you how to do measuring of the wheel to set yourself up. This is just, there's a timber block that's got the, the bottom spacer, it's got the hub and the top spacer, um, and you quite literally just use your verniers in a depth um, setup. You've got 130.75. So once you've got all your spaces set up for your front wheel, if you want to check it, that's what you check it. You should have 130.75 millimeter wide wheel, including spaces. Um, the other way to do um, to check the the disc offsets um, is, you know, set a set a metal ruler, um, and then you can measure, you know, from the the metal ruler or the straight edge down to the disc surface and get an actual disc measurement um, offset from that spacer. Um, so what I did was I, I did that methodology and did the same thing with the other wheels and just did the simple maths and that's how I ended up with my spacer, spacer dimensions. It's not terribly difficult. But again, if you're struggling with understanding those concepts, um, it's probably outside of your technical ability. But it wasn't terribly difficult. So um, take your time, measure everything twice, and, you know, turned out pretty good.